Welcome everyone to another edition of Marketing the Invisible. My name is Tom Poland, joined today by Kyle Roof. Kyle, g'day, sir. Where are you hanging out? Oh, I'm in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Chiang Mai, the, Thailand. How's the food? It's fantastic. Yeah, I thought eat, it would be. Yeah. yeah. And, and not expensive, right? No, it's, it's, it's no. very affordable. Even the nicest restaurants are very affordable. Fantastic. All right. So for those of you who don't know Kyle, he's the lead SEO and co-founder of SEO agency High Voltage SEO, which stands, if you don't know, for search engine optimization. It's how you get found easily on Google. He's also the creator of the SEO tool Page Optimizer Pro, which is just incredibly clever tool. He's also, if that's not enough, drum roll, please, uh, a found, he's one of the founders, actually the founder of the global community of 3,000 plus SEO professionals. So Kyle is the guy that leads the SEO professionals, okay? He's, it's called the Internet, Mar Internet Marketing Gold. Also, get this, his method to test whether single variables are ranking factors in Google's algorithms, algorithms was officially granted a patent in January 2020. So we're talking to the expert that the experts look to for advice. Kyle, it's a real privilege to have, on you, have you on the show, I must say. Our topic today is how to scientifically, that means so it actually freaking well works, folks, how to scientifically optimize a web page for Google traffic. And Kyle's going to tell us how to do that in just seven minutes. Kyle, I'm excited. Listeners, I hope you're excited. Our seven minutes starts now. Who is your ideal client? Our ideal client is creating content that needs to show up in Google. Uh, often this person is an SEO, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. It could be someone doing their uh, SEO for their own site, content writers, marketing teams, really anyone that is creating or writing content that isn't just for the sake of that content. Agencies or website owners who want to get found, right? Yeah, anyone that's doing something that needs to show up in Google, that's where it needs to be. That's, By that's the probably a million people a day that are actually trying to find you but currently can't. Question number two it might lead us nicely into actually to question number two, which is what is the problem you solve? And we've got six and a half minutes left. It's important to understand that SEO is a game of probability. You need to put yourself in the best position for success the most amount of times possible. And averagely good SEO is probably only somewhere around 50%. That means getting a page to rank every other time. When you think about it, that's just a coin flip. You right. could make the same SEO decisions and have the same success by flipping a coin and you'd be considered a good SEO. Uh, perhaps for most people though, they probably get a page to rank one out of three times. And that's, that's the SEO for a lot of people. And when you think about it, you probably should have just used the coin. You right. do better. Right. But what if you could cut, what if you could get to like three out of four or four out of five? Like now you're in an expert range. More times than not, you're succeeding. You're getting positive ROI on your work. That's what we're trying to do. That's the problem we're solving is setting, your, setting you up so that when you put out content, you know you're giving yourself the best chance to succeed, even if you're not an SEO expert. You, you're really Keep in mind that right. You're, you're okay. really tilting the chances of success in in in, in favor of the, the 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 person with the website who wants to be found. So let's go to question number three. How does someone know that they need what you've got? In other words, what's, what are sort of some of the typical symptoms? What's going on in their business where they're thinking, wow, um, yeah, I need some help with this? You know that negative voice in your life, the voice that tells you you're not good enough? Which or you one? you want to figure it out? <laughs> or you're like, well, that voice is actually Google. Um, for the most recent <laughs> updates, <laughs> Google has released these updates and they said, we've released this update and you'll never be good enough to figure it out. Right. Or um, they recently just said about SEO tools, those tools give you recommendations and they're good, but only an expert could use them. And I think that creates a level of frustration. And that frustration yep. is then reinforced by poor outcomes. They get the one out of three, they hear this from Google. You know, many people feel that, well, I guess we just have to live with this. And so people with those types of feelings, that's, that's who we want to help. And so there's a resignation that follows the frustration. The frustration going, I can't make this freaking thing work. And they change the rules every year. And then there's a resignation. Well, that's just the way it, it, it is, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. We've got five minutes left. Question four, what's some of the common mistakes that these, these folks make trying to get found on Google before they find your solution? Most often people think that Google makes value judgments. Uh, more than once I've spoken to a business owner and they say, you know, we're the best in town. Everyone knows it, but Google has put this side above ours. You know, and that side doesn't even do what we do. Or, or people say, you know, you can clearly see that my page is better than some other page. Uh, mine is better researched. I cite more sources. It reads better. They think Google can read. Right. And, and Google, can't, Google can't read. Google uh -huh. is amazing, but Google is just an algorithm. So you need mm -hmm. to give Google the math that it wants. And the mistake is, is not realizing that and not taking the math into consideration. Oh, it's a whole rabbit hole on its own, isn't it? The complexity of oh, this, sure. the potential complexity. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, they say a little knowledge is dangerous. It's what Mark Twain said. It's not the things we don't know that hurts us. It's the things we think we know that just ain't so. 
Question five, and we've got four minutes left. We're doing well. One valuable free action. So what I'm after here is a top tip. It's probably not going to solve the whole issue, the whole problem, but it might take people, folks, might get them started on the journey. Sure. Um, so there are places that Google looks on a page for a keyword, uh, and not all of these places are equal. Some places carry more weight than others. Ah. The top four places to put a keyword on your page are the title tag. That's often called the meta title. This is the title that search engines see. Okay. The next one is your H1. This is the title on your page that humans see. After that is paragraph text and in your URL. If you put your keyword in those four places, you've probably done 60% of SEO. Wow. Don't overthink it. Put your keywords in those spots and your pages will start to rank better. Um, one quick note, if you have an established page that's ranking pretty well, don't change your URLs. That page then becomes a new page to Google. So uh, make sure you're only doing this on brand new pages that you just created or a page that isn't doing well so you don't have too much to lose. Great top tip. Thank you, sir. Uh, doing well for time. Uh, question number six is a valuable free resource that we could direct people to that's going to help them more with this problem. Sure. So the, the tool is Page Optimizer Pro that we, that we talked about. And they can go to pageoptimizer.pro. But um, not necessarily using the tool. We have a blog. Um, I've conducted more than 400 tests on Google's algorithm. As you mentioned, I have a patent on how right. to see if something is or is not a ranking factor. In the blog, we debunk a lot of myths that you hear in SEO with those tests. Like, and we get into a lot of does this or does not, or this, does this work or does it not, and you can learn a lot from the blog. Um, but even better though, if you go to the homepage and you scroll to the bottom, you'll see a link to a workshop. You can ask me SEO questions. I do that workshop once a week. We alternate on Tuesdays and Thursdays in different time zones. And um, we talk about how to do SEO. At the end of the workshop, I come on live and I answer any and all questions, and those could be about using Page Optimizer Pro or just SEO in general, and you don't have to be a pop user. You can just want to know something about SEO, and I stay on as long as people have questions, and sometimes we get one or two questions. Sometimes we get a bunch of questions, and we stay on for a long time. Either is great. I'll answer any and all questions. So they go to Page Optimizer with a Z for our British friends, Page Optimizer dot pro scroll down to the bottom find the workshop register for it get all your questions answered uh, great offer thank you sir 90 seconds left last question what's the one question i should have asked you but didn't uh, I, I had to think about this one for a little bit but who is my favorite scientist oh uh, I, I have a bunch but the ones i love the most were doing their thing in and around the 1600s uh, galileo descartes newton and haley my all-time favorite is haley and you might be thinking, I know those first three, but I don't know Haley, but you do. You know him by his namesake, Haley's Comet. Right. Newton and Haley were friends. And Newton and just invented a brand new math that we call calculus. A lot of people don't know this, but Haley is the reason we have calculus because he executive produced the book, Principia de Mathematica, that Newton wrote. About this time, Haley is researching, uh, and, he, and he sees that the same celestial event is being recorded. So he takes calculus, the brand new math, and predicted the return of this celestial event, which he figured was a comet. Wow. He hit the nail on the head, wow. and it's now called Halley's Comet. Fun side note is that Halley never saw the comet. It comes around about every 80 years. He was born too late, and he died, and the comet returned 14 years after his death when he said it would. Now, when you read history like this, you think, like, wow, it's so cool that this brand new thing had just been invented, and these pioneers of the industry show up, and they do amazing things, um, and, and they didn't even have previous special knowledge of, of the thing. Well, how old is the Internet? It's about 20 years. How old is Google? Again, about 20 years. These things, there are new things coming out of this all the time. Like just a few months ago, we got, we got Core Web Vitals. That's a brand new thing. You can become the best in something on the internet right now with no previous knowledge or special skills. When I started college, there, there wasn't a Google. I am now an on-page SEO and testing expert. I'm on podcasts once a week. I speak at international conferences in, in Bali and Amazing. Thailand and, and Milan. Amazing. Uh, I, have no, I have no formal training in Google. There's still no formal training. This is one of those rare moments in time where you can write your name in, in the history books. Is, it is you can do it. A great time to be alive. Carl Roof, thank you for the inspiration and the advice. Thanks for checking out our Marketing the Invisible podcast. If you like what we're doing here, please head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate us, and leave us a review. It's very much appreciated. And if you want to generate five fresh leads in just five hours, then check out www.5hourchallenge.com.